uh, uh, Chairman Powell, I, I saw with great interest your comments on a, a cryptocurrency uh, out of the Fed. You said we would not proceed without uh, support from Congress and urged great care and transparency. I appreciate that. I think my subcommittee would probably have jurisdiction over that in some combination with Mr. Sherman's subcommittee. So I just wanted to uh, tip my hat to that sentiment. I think uh, we should work together. Uh, there's quite a bit of education, I think, to be done with the United States Congress on that very important topic. Uh, Secretary Yellen, Chair Paul, I'd like to probe a little bit deeper on central bank digital currencies, and in particular, the need for a secure digital ID for participants. I, I believe that both of you are on the record as acknowledging that an anonymous, untraceable digital dollar is not a viable option for our country or the free world because its ability to be abused for money laundering, terrorism financing, ransomware, and so on. Is that is that principally correct? I don't think I am on the record for that, but I'll go on the record now for it. Um, Secretary Owen? But nor am I on the record, but I would... I would agree that we need to be very careful about the use of a digital currency for um, illicit finance, and um, an anonymous currency makes that makes that much harder to control. Yeah, uh, well, I concur. I think it's sort of logically impossible, you know. Uh, and so, um, so on the other hand, you know, I believe that the Chinese approach to digital currencies that give the government immediate and unconditional access to all transaction information will be equally unacceptable to Americans and to most citizens of the free world. Um, and therefore, a digital dollar will be crucially dependent on having an effective authentication component that is a secure and legally traceable and maximally privacy preserving way for participants to authenticate themselves as a unique legally traceable individual, a secure digital ID, and it must be backed by a trusted court system and a clear legal regime to determine the conditions under which the participants might be unmasked. Uh, and um, you know, as a digital dollar, if it's to be used internationally, we're then going to need a digital ID system that operates internationally, uh, at least among the free countries of the world. Um, I'd, I'd like to thank you both for beginning engagement with uh, authorities in other countries on central bank digital currencies. And I was wondering where you see this discussion going as far as a secure digital ID and a means of authentication across boundaries, across countries. Maybe I should let Chair Powell, I should let Chair Powell start with this because he's been more involved than I have. Thank you. So. Yeah, I mean, where we are is uh, we are engaged in a process of looking at, at all of the technical issues and design issues which interact with each other, and that's that's one of the most basic ones. Um, reflecting your earlier question, um, I, I don't think that a a system that relies entirely on uh, you know, uh, for example, private, completely private governance or completely secret. Uh, um, uh, information about who's who's actually owning the the, the the digital dollar would would not be viable, and you know the, the lack of privacy in the Chinese system is just not something we we could we could do here. At the same time, uh, so there's got to be a balance, and and it does call for uh, using the two tiered system in some way, so that there's a wallet outside of the uh, uh, outside of the central bank and. Um, transfers can take place there and that there are appropriate protections. We're, we're only beginning to think carefully about these things and um, it's going to be a careful, detailed uh, uh, and probably lengthy process of consideration. One that we're, uh, you know, we're investing quite a bit in now and that I expect will last some time. Yeah. yeah. Secretary Yellen, did you have any thoughts on this? Well, I, I would... The issue of a secure digital cool, ID right? is very much in your court having to do with you know, one of the things the coronavirus laid bare is the lack of, you know, simply a list of, of citizens of the U.S. and then our ability to rapidly distribute funds, particularly to the underbanked. You know, a high quality and universal uh, digital ID in the U.S. would have made that immeasurably easier, as well as everything from, you know, vaccine certificates or, or you name it. Uh, and, and so this has been, uh, you know, it's an ongoing discussion on many fronts. 
and um, there are also sp specific proposals. I believe um, I believe you've had um, you've had letters urging uh, both of you to to look into this um, in in more detail. And uh, so I was just wondering what the state, just as simply as a means for citizens to receive payments, uh, you know, Fed accounts. Um, you know, each one of us has you know already an account with the federal government. Of uh, the IRS, at least, and I was wondering what your how you saw this part of the conversation going. Well, I think it's something that's worth exploring. I've not done so, but we would be glad to have further conversations with you about how something like this could work. There's certainly a problem, you. as you, you've mentioned. This time has Thank expired. Uh, Chairman Powell, uh, you have. Uh, we've talked a lot about wire fraud. Uh, your staff has told me they don't plan to solve the problem. I hope you get personally involved in making sure our new wire transfer system does solve the problem. And uh, Chairman Powell, I want to commend you for your statement yesterday that the Fed will not proceed with creating a new central bank digital currency without the support of Congress. And I don't think you'll have that support unless the know your customer provisions are applicable to this new system and it doesn't become useful uh, to uh, tax evaders, uh, terrorists, drug dealers, etc. 